Welcome to the bold analysis. After the Northlands raid, Kenyatta family held a meeting and they made a conscious decision that they were not going to give issue any pressure on the said attack. They are not pursuing any legal recourse over the matter, but they left Kenyans to debate about it and see whether how the conversation will end at the public court. But at the end of the day, the Monday, uh, unfortunate Monday tunnel event really left some egg in the eye of politicians that were highly blamed for that, um, for that incident, or rather for mobilizing that uh, group of guns. Me, my position is very clear that it's not about protesters, and sometimes I think it's also right for the media or ask some of us to take just a serious, a very solid position. It is very clear that while we cannot ascertain those who are behind it, but it was a coordinated raid. People cannot be in that place for long without the presence of the police. It is also very clear that it is not Azimio protesters that were protesting in Nairobi that uh, Walipandakari and went all the way to that place to commit that heinous act. In fact, even the buses moving to that direction from CBD were not leaving the CBD. So it's very true. It is also very clear that the failure by the security officers not to respond immediately when the raid was reported is revealing more about the deeper hands behind it. Now I analyzed and I asked the viewers here the political implication on how the political dynamics of Mount Kenya and how it will play out in the wake of that event. Today, there is a two-minute video I want us to watch where a group of some women who are actually senior members of the society coming from Gatundu, Ichaweri place, uh, um, um, rather Uhuru Kenyatta's home, came out to protest and calling for the government that they must protect Mamangira. I wanted to listen to that because it's going to give us a bearing on what exactly is happening in the Uhuru Kenyatta's, amongst the Uhuru Kenyatta's villages. his excellency the president Ruto. kwa maana yeye ndio mwisho akisema ifanywe itafanywa akisema kama ni majeshi kuja irinde maria mama ngina itakuja kurindwa kwa hivyo tunamuomba kwa this uh, women are senior members and they are coming out in full defense of mama ngina and from what i see they have actually pulled the widow's card and the gender card and the fact that this is an attack on Mamagena.
that property uh, allegedly then seems to be that is the direction it's taking in terms of the ownership. These are members, these are people from Mount Kenya. These are senior members of the society. The same day, there was another faction, a section of uh, the Gikuyu Council of Elders that emerged and were also protesting against it. And they even issued a press briefing, now really calling out some le re leaders from the region about on what they called us, uh, on what they termed as direct attacks on the former president or other threats to overtake the land. That really shows that the discussion, it seems to be taking an angle that it will go to community aspect. Huh? And I think it will, it has an impact on the dynamics of Mount Kenya politics. I want us to get a soundbite from the group of um, uh, the council vendors. <laughs> and killing of livestock, wanton felling of trees, and the setting of the plantation on fire was a stark reminder to this community of the unfortunate and devastating happenings of 2007-2008 ethnic animosity, the madness, the madness that brought Kenya on its knees. The attempt to take over and subdivide the land is a discouraging signal to any investor, both local and foreign in this country. It sets a precedent in the history of Kenya and misguides our youth that it is right to take by force anything from anyone. It was a vivid way of bringing to fruition the Hustlers versus Dynasties campaign calls of last year. This council expresses its shame and the shame of the entire Kikuyu community that the individuals responsible for the above horror were Kikuyu leaders comprising Ichongwa, Kuria, Ndindi, and Gachagua, among others. Ichongwa's direct threat to Uhuru to take over Kenyatta farms in Kiambu, Taveta, and Nakuru was a culmination of the animosity severally expressed by all four leaders against Uhuru Kenyatta. Their utterances and actions have made the Kikuyu community a laughing stock and the spite of other Kenyans. Apologizes to the Kenyan nation that we brought such persons into national leadership. We advise our voters to be extremely selective next time and not to bring into, into leadership or into power these and other similar characters. To the four men and a cohort of women leaders, MPs, who as elders we are ashamed to name, we ask the question, which leaders of the Kalenjin, Luo, Kamba, Luya, and other communities have insulted or ridiculed their leaders, e.g. Ruto, Raila, Kalonzo, Mudavadi, etc., as you have done to Uhuru. What does he owe you as a person or even as a president of Kenya, other than the leadership that he so successfully steered. The Kikuyu Council reminds our leaders that Uhuru still holds the title of leader of the Kikuyu community and Mount Kenya generally. These people 
uh, through Kikuyus to the Kenyans. So that's, that tells you that what is happening actually about this raid is something that will take a community approach. And I think they have decided that it's going to be about the community and just taken as if it's, you know, they're taking the back seat to respond, not to address the leaders, but they are going to senior members of the society. And um, looking at it, they're simply passing a message to William Ruto that the attack in Northland City is actually trying to demean, or rather is attack on Mamangina. The last time there was a discussion about the estate duty tax, Mutu Ambaya Alizima Hiyomoto was Mamangina. When she came out and responded telling President Ruto that instead of soiling my name out there, find out my property that which have not paid tax and though so sell it uh, and you know sell it or sue me and I'm going to pay, get me the evidence that I've not paid and I am going to pay. So that is villages and according to information I've received is you know today the government deployed security in the residence of uh, former president the Ichawiri home I think that's the home to Jomo Kenyatta. They deployed heavy security there in a bid to try now to do some damage control. The Northlands attack has actually changed. It is not about Uhuru Kenyatta and it is about Bamangina. Now, the reason why they are taking it, I think it's now pulling uh, to a wrong, it's now pulling to a direction that William Ruto would not actually want. The reason why this is a very dangerous turn for him here is, I think you will then see when it can gather steam that Ruto is after Namangina, you will see women caucus coming out in defense and it turns as a gender card against the Kenyan women. And there is nothing emotive as dragging mothers into a discussion because everyone was brought in this world by a mother. So the gender card would actually be pulled alongside the widow's card. That is it. They're trying to pull it against the widow's card. Now, that is not a card. There is a card that will cut across and it will go beyond the political persuasion. Be it Kenya Kwanzaa, be it uh, Zimula Umoja, it will actually come beyond that. Secondly, looking at that kind of reaction, it's a very, uh, it's a very clear warning to William Ruto that Mount Kenya can still coalesce around Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. That is it. Of course, I know it's a bit mobilized. But when such kind of a group comes and there is a message they are saying, they are saying that wachana na huyu mama, sabu huyu mama metusaidia, watatuotu wa mene ya jeshi, tukiwa na shida na tusaidia, they are trying to portray the Kenyatta family as a family that has been supporting the elderly members of the society in the area. Now, that to me is coming out as a defense that, contrary to what people are saying, because... If you look at the messaging by, or rather the political narrative that the UDA luminaries are then trying to uh, uh, propel against Mama, Mama, Mama Ngina, their message here is that they have a lot and the community seems to have not benefited from it. In fact, that there's a discussion about how much they have. Remember, there was another similar attempt of raid in another land known as Kedong in Suswa, but I've seen fact checkers have found out that that land that do not belong to Uhuru Kenyatta, and I just don't know what is this about. So um, there is one thing I want. There is something I want to to see from this. This a reaction is showing a bit of a rebellion over the matter. But there is an interesting twist that I want you to pay attention to. Uh, for the last two days, the discussion and in the political dynamics, 
it has been seen as a way in which those who brag as sons of Mau Mau are showing, are trying then to revenge against, some vengeance against former President Uhuru Kenyatta. Let me put some disclaimer a bit. I am one person that I feel, I feel so much uh, disgusted by the leaders coming to brag to us about we are sons of Mau Mau. The fact that you are a son of my mom, that is with you, your people there, and your relatives and your family. That that doesn't have to do with Kenya. You know, that's your personal ego. The fact that you are a son of my mom is not going to help us put food on the table. Yeah, because if you start calling each one of us a son of who and who, then all of us will be referred by our father's names. <laughs> Everyone has a father. Anyway. So I've I've already been wondering, like, that is that is to Tell your village mates, Uko, the, the people you are with, the Uko, the, the people you spend your time with, that I'm son of so and so. So, the target has been to tell us that uh, an attack on Uhuru Kenyatta, and I think those who are communication, those who are handling it at the family level, then want to turn it and not to be as Uhuru's attack. Because remember, the reason why you need to lift it off from Uhuru Kenyatta. Is because those who are saying their the, the narrative that the attack was attack on Uhuru Kenyatta, and we know very well that the trigger wall is from Uhuru Kenyatta, but that is not what the family wants to project because that will actually escalate the discussion. And there is about a bit of comparison. Uhuru was serving as a president for 10 years, and of course, it's true that as a government, he did not make everyone happy, even from the same Mount Kenya region. I, am, I have seen people saying that in Kariobangi there was evictions and Kikuyus were affected and who oversaw saw that. Now, for those who compare and say, because we evicted Kenyans, uh, Kikuyus in the middle of COVID in Kariobangi, and I've always said, I don't know why Kikuyus, because Kariobangi, I think everyone stays there. So, uh, you also, that's also befitting. There's also another one of counterfeit war that affected Yamakema, Yamakema business traders. And all this discussion has been on, what is happening to you, you're also eating your humble pie. So, because of the equation of Uhuru and uh, these other UDA politicians, I think the family has decided, opted now, let's keep it off from Uhuru Kenyatta and it become a Mangina. Now, that will bring that matter to closure. Take that to bank. When it becomes a question of Ruto attacking Mamangina, that brings that matter to closure. And to, through that, and that is where you can see that they have not opted to go to court and they don't want the conversation to escalate. They know very well that if you pull the Mamangina card in it, you will bring it to an end. Let's meet in the next video.